Hello, this is Nectarius from Celestial Textures and in today's video we're going to talk about a cost-effective way of controlling your modular synth from your door. For this example I'm going to be using Ableton Live 10 using a budget CV MIDI to CV interface by Mutable Instruments called uh, CV Power, which is a 4 output uh, USB powered uh, 4 HP MIDI to CV converter. It's a DIY project, but um, if, if you're good with soldering, you know, it's well worth building one. Or you can find uh, a used one secondhand for less than 50 euros, like I did. And um, it's a highly configurable, but easy to configure module. It has no knobs or buttons on the screen to give you any visual feedback of what you're doing. But the way you configure uh, the CV PAL is by choosing a MIDI channel, a different MIDI channel to pipe uh, MIDI data through. So channel 1 is one configuration, channel 2 is another configuration, 3, 4 is different. You can check all the different configurations in the Mutable Instruments uh, website in the CVPAL page to see which one suits your workflow. But for this example I'm going to use channel 14 and channel 14 uses the, um, the basic uh, CV gate clock and reset configuration. The green cable is the CV output and that sends uh, pitch data to the Radical Frequencies Dual Precision VCO. Uh, out to is the pink cable which sends uh, gate information from Ableton's MIDI clips to uh, Mutable Instruments Peaks Envelope which opens up the, the VCA and uh, allows sound to come out and stop. Uh, gate 1 out, which is the third output from the top, is the clock from Ableton Live, and I'm using that to clock my Euclidean Circles uh, trigger sequencer. And gate 2 output, which is the fourth output from the top, the last output, is the reset signal from Ableton. So um, when, I, uh, when, I, when I press, uh, when I start Ableton, uh, you can see that Euclidean Circles started playing. If I stop it and then press play again, it jumps back to step 1 instead of not using a reset signal. So if I press, uh, if I play Ableton now and stop it and play again, you can see that Euclidean Circles is resuming play from the position that it was when I last stopped Ableton. But for this example, this is not what I want. I want every time I start Ableton for my trigger sequencer to reset back to step one and whatever sequences I make on that one, is they're going to be um, playing as they were with uh, whatever I have going in Ableton Live. Okay, so the basic, let's start from uh, sending some MIDI information and setting everything up. I'm going to play Ableton now. And you can see I have a, a note on, uh, on every beat. And the reason I'm using this, this MIDI file is because I want to open the metronome in Ableton Live. And you can hear everything is on time. Yeah, nice and simple. If I go to the CV Pulse channel, I have nothing. Go I have nothing happening in the hardware latency. Everything's at, at their default, at its default state. So if I record uh, these notes from my modular into Ableton, look, you can hear that everything is on time, but you can actually see that the recording is quite off. So we need to sort this out, and the way to sort this out is to is to go into Live Preferences and go to the Audio tab, and uh, there's this uh, parameter called uh, Driver er Error Compensation in the Latency um, tab. There's an overall latency of 34.6 milliseconds. So this this is what Ableton has calculated for this buffer size. Uh, which is the combination of the input latency and the output latency. So as a starting point, I'm going to input a negative value into the driver error compensation so I can make the overall latency go as close to zero as possible. In this case, minus 0 0.37 milliseconds. So if I press space now, I can hear that even though my modular was on time before, now it's not on time. It's gone off. The way to sort this out is to play Ableton again and go to hardware latency and start fiddling with that. I mean, 
a relative value of 36 milliseconds makes things sound on time. If you remember, in the driver error compensation, we have minus 35 milliseconds. I mean, it's close enough. I'll just leave it there for now. So now it sounds on time. Let's see if, if it records on time as well. Okay, that looks better. I can hear that my modular is on time and I can see that it's recorded bang on time as well. So now I have everything closely time aligned. That's a bit early. Actually, since we have in the audio driver error compensation, we have minus 35. Let's go to CVPAL hardware latency. And and make that 35 as well. Let's make another recording to see if that makes things any tighter. Okay. And it's just a touch later. Actually, you know, it's quite all right. I think it's better to be a bit later, slightly later, to be early. So if you record something, you're not going to lose the first bit of audio. You have it there. And I mean, that, that is close enough if I just play it back again, you can hear the recorded audio and you can hear the live input from my modular and you can hear the metronome in Ableton and you know, everything's on time or like very 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 close okay so we've sorted this out and uh, everything's on time if I um Uh, yeah, that's the pitch information going from output one, the green cable, going to my oscillator. So everything's tightly under control. So we've sorted out the, the we've time aligned the MIDI clips from Ableton Live. The MIDI data from Ableton Live is on time with uh, everything's playing on time with the live feed from the modular. And when we record something from the modular and we play it back. Everything, the audio is on time with the live feed uh, from the hardware um, instrument. So everything sounds nice and tight. The next thing we, not, we need to do is to uh, fix the MIDI clock, to sort out the MIDI clock, because using uh, hardware latency in... Uh, Using hardware latency in an external hardware instrument in Ableton Live is one thing, but uh, we also need to address whatever... Um, latency or problems we might, we might have with a clock that is running the Eurorack sequencer, the Euclidean circles in this example. So instead of using um, this mini clip, I'm just going to use some triggers from Euclidean circles. And I'm going to use the first, the, the same four notes the, that are on the bar on the beat. So we can. Uh, Hear it with re with uh, relation to the uh, metronome in Ableton. So if I press space now, it's not on. I can hear the sequencer being off. Play it again. Yeah. So if I go to live preferences and if I go to MIDI and I go to my output port and I pull down this is this drop down menu output CV power. This is what I'm using and go to MIDI clock sync delay give that a negative value of minus 35 ms milliseconds which is what my hardware uh, latency is in my external hardware instrument plugin in Ableton which is the same uh, millisecond value that I'm using in the driver error compensation and now I'm just going to record some of that as well and give it some more notes. Okay, and let's check this out. Yeah, bang on time. Look, so we've sorted the MIDI clock going into Euclidean circles, which is our Eurorack sequencer. We've sorted out the, the, the MIDI clock, which is different than the, than the timing of the MIDI data from the MIDI clips that we're using uh, from Ableton Live. And we've made, uh, we've given the driver error compensation a value that um, 
makes everything nice and on time when it gets recorded and played back and everything's synced up so um yeah that's how the fast the quick and dirty way to set up everything in ableton live and uh a cheap MIDI to CV interface like CV Power, which is very nice. You can configure it to be four gates or clocks or four CV outputs and use automation, what, whatever. You know, it's it's a it's a very underrated module. And uh, bear in mind that whatever I've done in this example is all relative to the buffer size uh, value that uh, I have that I'm using for this example. If I've used something else, I wish I would have I would have had to use different values for. Um, uh, hardware latencies and, cl and clocks and what have you but uh, yeah this is how you set up Ableton Live and uh, CV Power to control your uh, modular synth I hope you learned something from this video and we're going to move over to Orestes where he will explain the audio clock pulse technique in various DAWs cheers in this video I will use the AS3 module from Expert Sleepers my audio interface is an RME Fireface 800 and I have connected the ADAT output to the AS3 module. The procedure remains the same for any DC coupled interface. Here is a list with the most common DC coupled interfaces of the market, plus a list of applications that support DC coupled generation. Some DAW they have natively the option to send an audio clock, but I will take everything from the beginning. The first thing we need is an audio file with a simple pulse waveform. The audio file will be the one that will trigger the modular system. I will use a common pulse file from Make Noise that you can find in the link description of this video. For this video example, I have connected the output 8 of ES3 module to trigger the input of Mutable Instruments Plate VCO, and I'm using the classic waveforms models of Plate. If you are using an older version of Cubase, you will need to create a mono audio track channel and insert the audio pulse wave file. You can do exactly the same thing with a sampler. The next step is to route the audio track we have created to an individual output for our audio interface. The audio out will be the one that will send the signal to the modular system. I will go to the studio menu and select audio connections. I will create a new mono bus output and I will select the output of my audio interface that is connected to my modular system. In this case is the ADAT number 16th. On the mono track channel that I have created, I will select the output bus to the one I just created in the audio connections. I will import the pulse wave file and I will use one to four quantize. As I hit play on the transport, the cube base will send the audio pulse to the AS3 module and it will trigger plates. This is a universal way of doing it and will work for any DAW. Keep in mind that you can use this way to create a trigger sequencer for your modular system. On Ableton there is a specific device that we can use. It's a part of the Max for Live collection CV tools and is called CV Instrument. Drag and drop the CV Instrument in a MIDI track. Select the output of your audio interface. In this case I'm selecting the output 8 of the ES3 module that in my case is the output number 28. Create a MIDI track with the quantization we need depending on our project. Keep in mind that some modules behave much better when the length of the trigger is smaller. As I hit play, Ableton will send the audio pulse to the ES3 module and it will trigger plates.
Again, if we want to use it as a trigger sequencer, we can add some more triggers to our MIDI file. On Bitwig Studio, you have a bunch of hardware devices that you can use for your modular system. In this example, I will use the hardware CV instrument with a MIDI channel and the hardware clockout device with an audio channel. I will set up again my project BPM to 120 and I will load the hardware CV instrument device to an empty channel. On the gate out section, I will select the individual output of my audio interface that will send the clock to my modular system. I am creating a MIDI track and I will set again my triggers. As I hit play, Bitwig will send the audio pulse to the ES3 module and again it will trigger plates. With the hardware clockout device, we just need to set the individual output of our audio interface that's connected with our modular system and set the quantization setup. On Cubase 10 and the newer versions, they have introduced a new metronome configuration page and almost similar process with the one we saw on Ableton and Bitwig Studio. First, I need to create a dedicated audio output. I will open the audio connection setup and on the output tab, I will add a new mono audio bus. This output bus is the one that will send the clock to my modular system and I will rename this bus to clock so it can be more easily recognized. Now I need to configure the metronome setup. On the General tab, at the Click Destination area, choose Use Audio Click. And on the Audio Click output, I'm selecting the Mono Output Bus that I just created. On the Audio Click Output dialog, I will switch from the Use Stainware Click Sound to Use Custom Sounds, and I will add the Modular Pulse Audio File. I will use the same file for all different sections and with the same audio level. You can adjust the output level and save all settings as a single preset. Now I can close the dialog and activate the metronome click. We are ready to go. Every time that I will press play on the transport, Cubase automatically will send the clock to my modular system. For VCV rack, I will use the native init patch of VCV. I will add one more audio 8 module, so I can route my clock output through this module to my audio interface and to my modular system. I will use a free clock generation module that is called BPM module and is made by Alfredo Santa Maria and you can find it in the library of VCV Rack. 
I am connecting the bit clock output to the audio aid device that is routed to the individual output of my audio interface that's connected with the ES3 module. And direct, I'm sending the clock to my modular system. That was most of the ways to clock a modular system from a computer through an audio clock. I hope you enjoyed this video, looking forward to your comments and see you next time.